With this Lightroom tutorial, let me demonstrate the power of tonal adjustments. This will help us turn a rather flat RAW file into a vibrant, contrast-rich final image. As always, you can follow along by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description. And now, let's begin. This right here is our RAW file. At the moment, this image lacks a lot of contrast and we want to change that. I'm going to be using a lot of tonal adjustments for that, but before we can start, since I'm heavily relying on the histogram to apply these changes, I first want to correct the white balance with the technique I have shown in a different video. So let's do this real quick. What we want to do is to align those three peaks up there in the histogram by playing around with the temperature and the tint slider. Right here, you can see a blue peak standing out. That means there is a quite heavy blue color cast and we can fix that by simply raising the temperature. And you can see as we raise the temperature, how those peaks are aligning more and more. That's looking like a rather good spot. I also wanna bring down the tint just a notch. And just like that, we have fixed the white balance and we have now a neutral looking image. The reason for me to fix the white balance and thus align those three peaks is because I later want to stretch the histogram, introducing more contrast into this image and having aligned colors like this just makes this a lot easier. You will see that in a minute. First, let me also change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will also lessen the contrast just a little bit and thus we get some more control over it. Now, the tonal adjustments. First, we want to make sure what we want to do with this image. We have a morning winter scene, so it makes sense for this scene to be a lot brighter. Now, the most obvious thing to do would be to bring up the exposure. But as we bring up the exposure, we are pushing the whole luminance range. So that means the highlights and the shadows all get equally brighter. And that's not what we want, since we are not changing the contrast this way. Instead, let's reset the exposure. In fact, I actually want to bring it down. And I'm bringing it down since I want to have a darker base image. Just around here looks good. We have more details in the highlights while not losing details in the shadows of this image. And again, the histogram still is closely together like it was before. So to introduce contrast into this image, we want to basically spread the histogram. We want to take the highlights, make them brighter, while we are going to take the shadows and the blacks and maybe make them even darker. Let's start with the highlights. To target them, we can use the highlights and the whites slider. I wanna start with the whites and just raise it up. And now again, take a closer look at the histogram. You can see the tonal values are getting stretched quite a bit this way. And as I go higher and higher with the whites slider, we are getting very, very close to overexposure. So you want to be careful with that. You can make the overexposure visible by holding down the Alt key and adjusting the whites slider. And here you can see some red points coming in. That's where the overexposure is happening. So right at this point, we do have a little too much of those highlights. Let's bring them down a notch. I think right about here looks great. However, I do think we could push those brighter tones some more by playing around with highlights. Again, I'm dragging up the slider. I'm being very, very careful here because I don't want to overexpose anything at this point. Just want to stretch the highlights some more. Wonderful. Now let's compare to before real quick. Remember, we only adjusted the exposure and the highlights very, very slightly. You can clearly see we have introduced more contrast already with the highlights being a lot brighter than in the original RAW file. But of course we can do more for a better contrast. After adjusting the highlights of the image, we can now also work on the shadows. And for that we do have the shadows and the blacks slider. Let's first bring down the shadows. This will have a rather subtle effect on this image because as of now, this image does not have that many shadows as it has highlights. So this effect will be very, very subtle, but we can make it stronger by also bringing down the blacks. And again, take a look at the histogram as we bring down the black slider, we are stretching it very, very gently. And thus we are just introducing more contrast to this image. I highly recommend not to go too low with the blacks, otherwise it looks very, very strange very fast. 
I'm aiming for just a little bit more contrast right about here. I don't want to make the very dark parts underexposed. I do want to keep the blacks somewhere right here in the midtones, which helps to create a very soft look for this image. And I think this soft look works quite well on this winter landscape. Nonetheless, we have pushed the contrast even more as we can see comparing the image to before. Again, it's a very subtle effect on the shadows since there just aren't that many shadows in this image, but this effect really, really helps to make the image pop. Now, of course, we also have this contrast slider. And what this one does is it just spreads the histogram further, which means it makes the highlights brighter as well as the shadows darker. So I want to introduce a little bit of contrast, but really not too much. Just around here looks nice to me. Perfect. And at this point, we do have quite a different image. I really, really like how this scene looks already. I don't think we need to change much, but right now I hope you can see how powerful those tonal adjustments are. Of course, we can tweak this image some more. So I want to bring up the texture, giving this image some more detail. At the same time, I want to work on the soft look I earlier have mentioned and therefore I'm going to bring down the clarity. I'm also going to bring down the dehaze, making the scene a little more foggier, just like this. Wonderful. I also want to bring up the vibrance and I want to bring up the saturation, just like this. We want this image to be very colorful. So that's a good spot right there. Okay. I actually think there's not much left to do. I want to apply a little bit of masking. So let's do that real quick. Uh, I guess I'm starting with a simple linear gradient and I'm covering the foreground. The reason here is I want to enhance the foreground a little more by bringing down the blacks and thus just introducing more contrast right there in this particular area. Now, as I bring down the blacks, you can see those blue tones in the foreground getting a little more intense. So we really want to be careful with that. I think this foreground part is already a little bit too saturated. So what I want to do is to bring down the saturation. Just like this and bring it more in line with the rest of the image. Perfect. Then I do want to apply one more mask. I'm going to create a radial gradient. Just like this may be and I'm going to place the center outside the image to get a more natural effect because what I want to do with this is I want to add some sunlight coming in from the left side and to do that I'm going to bring up the blacks and I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. Again I want to keep it subtle so I'm not going to go too crazy with those sliders but that's looking pretty good to me. Okay then I guess we can do a little bit of color grading. I'm going to head into the color mixer. I'm not going to work on the saturation. I want to work on the luminance, however. And what I want to do in here is to just make the blue sky a little darker by bringing down the blue luminance. This will also change the foreground in a very nice way, I think. So I'm not worried too much about the added contrast in this area. So before, after. Looks much better. If we want, we can also apply a little bit of split toning. So let's open up the color grading panel and I'm using the highlights. We can introduce some more golden light on the scene by bringing up the hue somewhere in this color range. And of course, we want to bring up the saturation. Now that's highly dependent on your liking. You could bring it up quite a bit to create a very, very heavy stylized image. However, I think this is a bit too much. I'm going to bring down the saturation just around here to have some subtle golden hour lights coming in. Wonderful. Now we're almost done. We can also head down into the calibration tab for some final color grading. And as always, I'm just playing around with the blue primary hue and saturation. So I'm going to bring down the hue. Just be careful. Bringing down the hue will turn those blue color tones more into an aqua-ish color tone but I think this looks great. I also want to bring up the saturation here. All right, I'm quite happy with how this is looking. And finally, we can sharpen this image in the details tab. And again, I'm using the same settings as always. I'm going to bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking while holding down the Alt key. 
and then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And that's the image after just a bunch of Lightroom adjustments and with the tonal adjustments being the most important one for this scene. I hope this was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have anything to add or any questions left, feel free to write in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.